Raymond driving back out to Middleton. He hesitates. Looking to get Longway set up. He sets the screen. Rolling to his left. Nice draw by Kyle Charlo to pick it off. Here comes Green trying to break the press by himself. Gets it stolen away. Easy steal and basketball time from Dante Maduro. And just like that, Southeastern is only down by one. Nickerson breaks the press. Nian. Close up from three. Off. Nice rebound by Charlotte. Nearly loses it. Here comes Nian. Draws the foul. And it looks like they're going to call it on Dante Middleton. Or Richie Middleton. Nice job by Kyle Charlotte that time on the offensive glass. Kyle Charlotte is already doing fantastic under the basket. Nickerson looking for someone, finds Nian. Missoulis finds Reed, back down to Charlotte, he picks up the foul. Foul called that time on Dante Maduro. Charlotte's first free throw attempt of the game. He misses the first, off the back rim. This is the second as well, rebound is batted around, the Sharks come away with it, great hustle. Three in the corner, quick three, off. Goes for his own rebound, but touches it. Out of bounds, that time off of Daniel Longwood. Baltimore will have the inbound underneath the hoop. This has been a long possession for the Sharks. All the offensive rebounding has helped them out a lot. And into the game now is Jake Wisniewski taking out Kyle Charlotte, who stepped in and played a lot of good minutes for the Sharks as a sophomore. But now Jake returning to his regular role. Jake was out last game with an injury to his elbow, but he is playing today in the face. Well, Elko will help them out a lot. The Sharks turn over, coming the other way. Southeastern misses a layup. Nice job by Nick on the defense. And Vineski on the glass. Nickerson trapped. He finds Reed. Nick Nickerson. Uh, Nick Neen in the corner. Off. Missoulis. Reed. Off. Batted around again. Reed. Out of bounds. It will remain the Sharks ball. The offensive rebound continues. Being checked into the game now for the Monterey Sharks is the spark plug off the bench, Isaiah Stafford. He comes in for Eli Nickerson. He's had a big role lately, lately and of course last game. Last game, Isaiah Stafford came away with 12 points. He did a really good job at just lighting up once he came out to crash at the start of that. The Sharks, of course, got the, the uh, offensive rebound last possession. Look to do the same, but don't. That time, Raymond comes away with it. Boxed, driving, pulls up, off. Missouri's the rebound. Here comes Moon. Reed, Stafford in the corner, rolling left. Looks for contact, won't find it. Missouri's with the big offensive rebound. Gets it out to Reed. Looks like Northeastern is in a 2-3 zone right now. Missoula's thought about it, now drives, splits the defense, and this is the layup. Out of bounds, off of Chris that time. It'll be Southeastern ball. Middleton. Crossing. Pops. Back to Middleton. Rolling right. Picks up the foul. Does not get the bucket that time for Dante Madeira, but he will head to the line for two. A lot of fouls called early in this game. Both teams already have three, and we still have 340 left in the first quarter. And Madeira misses the first. The missed penalty shots have been, foul shots have been a uh, lost opportunity. They've missed about four, which could have put them a little ahead by three points. Yeah, it's uh, 
something you never want to see as a coach, but he converts in the second as Nickerson was just recently set back into the game for the Sharks from the Zulus. Ian. Stafford, into the corner. He's trapped. Finds his nest. Nickerson throws it. Back again. Eli Nickerson for three. His second of the night. He's already got eight. Here comes Maduro. He misses. His nest with the rebound. Sharks with a fast break. Nickerson on the break. the Sharks 12 points tonight. He is making a big presence on the field. That time we get the offensive rebound and the foul, and Daniel Longway will head to the line. Arnold right now, you gotta be telling the Sharks just to keep doing what you're doing so far. Giving a lot of pressure on defense, maybe a little less fouls, already have four so far. But you like the high intensity, it's what's kept them in the game on offense. They've already got 16 tonight. Much of that coming from the confidence of players like Eli Nickerson. He's already got 10. like Southeastern will come out with Raymond, Henderson, Longway, Boxed, and Maduro. Or correction, Middleton, Middleton, not Maduro. Maduro was just recently signed out. Only a minute 30 left on the clock for the first quarter. Both teams are looking to finish it strong. Middleton, Longway, guarded by Charlotte. Big block by Wisniewski, but they called a foul. And he'll head to the line for two more. Longway has already been at the line tonight. He missed both on the previous trip to the charity stripe. That's the Sharks' fifth foul tonight, and only in the first quarter. 
The long way struggles continue. And this is the first. And in comes Christian Blakely for the first time tonight. He did not play last tournament game. Christian Bla Blakely had been out most of the early season and has a good portion of the game due to the injury, but he's come back stronger, although he did not play against the next previous Yeah, he's a, he's a really good skilled player and he has good size too, so hopefully the Sharks can use him against what is one of Southeastern's shortest lineup with only player over 6'1", I believe, right now is long. <laughs> Nickerson, but they call it off. Three second call. Southeastern will have the Nice job passing around. We gotta stay aware of where you are. Middleton. Sizing up. Back out to Raymond for three. Then Blakely turns it over. Here comes Middleton. Waits right around Missoulis and converts on the fast break layup. 25 seconds left now. Stafford. Nickerson. Missoulis will look to run in the offense with only 15 seconds left. Stafford. Wisniewski. Chris Mazuris will pull the three in the defender's mouth and air balls it. Good hustle by Stafford, he keeps it in. Here comes Wisniewski. Good effort, but does not catch it. Yeah, good effort by the Sharks on that last play. Stafford, a nice job keeping it in. But they do not score in the last possession. Regardless, they are up by five. The Southeastern bench is absolutely furious at the deficit right now. It's a game that they think they should be in the lead. They have a big size advantage. And they were higher ranked than the Sharks, too, considering the fact that they play in a more difficult league, even though they did have to beat the one seed to make it here tonight. There is uh, no denying the intensity so far. It's only the first quarter, and it feels like it's the fourth. And that's the kind of intensity you find at these Sharks tournament games. We've only had two in the last four years, the other one being last week. And uh, we, were, we were all here to see that one when we coveraged it, and it was just as crazy as this one, even, even though it was away. And the Sharks fans are felt uh, just about everywhere the Sharks travel. The constant subbing in, there's two or one or two subs in each foul. It's really helping the Sharks with the high intensity. If they have fresh legs, they can pressure with all their energy, get those fast breaks, and go for layups. Yep, no doubt. <laughs> Taking the inbound now is Henderson. He gives it in to Middleton. Sharks going with a 2-3 zone now. In the corner, it's Bops for three. Off. Rebound collected by Longway. Longway finds Middleton. Middleton drives in the lane, kicks it out to Henderson for three. Off. And then Blakely collects the board for the Sharks. Here comes Nickerson. He has numbers. She's used to stay at home. Missoulis. Nickerson. Back to Missoulis. Nickerson in the corner. Off, air balls. Here comes Southeastern the other way. Middleton driving through the lane. Throws up the layup, no foul. They collect the rebound and regroup. Here comes Henderson. Bops, long way. Bops again, drives, pulls up, misses. A lot of awkward shots for Bops. He takes a lot of those club mid-rangers when they're contested. It doesn't seem to be effective at all so far. Monway's letting them take those far out shots because they really don't seem to be hitting them at this point. No, not at all. They turn it over and here comes Bops the other way. Henderson gets long way in the middle. Long way turns it over. Nice steal by the Sharks that time. 
Nickerson, Stafford for three, off. Rebound tapped by Wisniewski, right to Stafford. Nice shot by Wisniewski on the offensive glass. Good call and Stafford for finishing, yeah. yeah. He followed his shot that time and it paid off. Bobst in the corner for three, off. Wayman continues to airball threes when he takes them. I don't know why he continues to. And Missouri tries to find Stafford over the top. It sails out of bounds, poor passing choice that time. Middleton. Raymond. Henderson in the corner. Southeastern moves it around. They get underneath the basket, kick it back out. Raymond misses again, no foul card. Here comes Stafford, he has numbers. Close past the defender, gets it down low to Missoula. He goes up, misses. Rebound batted around, Reed comes away with it. Stafford tries to get it to Shaw Love, but forces the pass, it is turned over. Offensive rebounds have been a big strong for Monomoy so far. It gives them second opportunities, even though they missed the first shot. Yeah, it's helped them out a lot so far. It's definitely the, one of the reasons why the uh, Southeastern coaching staff is so furious. They have a height advantage, but from watching this game, you wouldn't think so. Here comes Henderson, his first shot of the game, off. Out of bounds, Monomoy ball. Southeastern continues to press. Stafford, Charlot, back to Stafford. He's got defenders all around him. Goes right around long way again. Despite the length of the Southeastern defenders, Stafford continues to drive right into the heart of the defense and finish with defenders draped all over him. If there's anything you can say about Stafford, it's he's hard working. Even if he doesn't have an easy shot, he'll make and take a hard shot. Yeah, he's constantly hustling out on the floor. Turned over, Nickerson picks it off. He's got defenders on the break. Middleton can't steal it from him. Nickerson finishes. Sharks now up by 11. 22 to 11, and we still have four and a half left in the first half. Southeastern has to find out something better to do. They gotta change the game plan, because what they're doing right now is not working for them. And they call the travel on Raymond that time. Great defense by the Sharks so far, holding Southeastern to only 11 as they sub back in their starter, Dante Madero, and take out Nickerson Raymond, who has had a really, really poor night for Southeastern so far. Nickerson. Missoula thought about it. Turned it over as he tried to get it back out to Nickerson. Sharks get it back. Stafford in the corner, off. Nickerson saves it right to Stafford. The ball's on the floor. They don't call a jump, and now they do. And it's gonna be Southeastern ball, I believe. Yes, yeah, Southeastern will have the inbound. Oh no, no, it is gonna be the Sharks ball. I believe this is the second call, second call jump ball of the game, so that's why the Sharks will have it. Nickerson. Gets it through the defense to Missoulis. Being defended by Henderson and Middleton. Stafford. Charlot in the middle, pulls up from mid-range. It falls. Big basket by Charlot. Sharks now up by 13. Here comes Middleton. Madero back to Middleton. Henderson. Madero holding the ball. In the corner, he'll take a three, off. Rebound, long one out to Henderson. And it's blocked by Nickerson, but they said he got a little bit of arm. So he'll head to the line. Henderson will have his first chance to score tonight. Monomoy has some fairly young players, both Stafford and Kyle, uh, Kyle Charlot, who have been big factors so far going into the game, are only sophomores and will have two more years. Yeah, we love to see the youth out there on the floor right now. And Henderson misses the first, and coming back into the game for the Sharks is Wisniewski for Nickerson. And for Southeastern, it is Guabi Paris is coming in for Longway. 
his first minutes of the game. Henderson misses the second as well. Southeastern is absolutely struggling at the charity stripe so far tonight. Sharks have six fouls, but almost none of it has turned into points for Southeastern. And they turn it over. Sharks do have a lot of turnovers. If there's one takeaway from the first half, it's been that. And he misses, but they get it back. Middleton on the offensive glass. Crossing over on Charlot. Gets it out. They cross over again. Here comes Madero into the lane. And they call the travel. They tried to go into a hop step, took way too many steps. That one was obvious. Charlotte will inbound it. And timeout called by the Sharks, their first of the night. I like that timeout if I'm Coach Arnold. You want to just get the guys a breather right now. You love the way things are going. Momentum is in your favor. Maybe just tell them to settle down a little bit. Uh, the only takeaway, like as I said earlier, has been the turnovers. So maybe if they can find a way to be a little less careless with the ball. 13 point lead is definitely gonna help them. If they can hold at least a 10 point lead, they will be very happy going into the second half against this team. Yeah, this is a team that it looks like they have a lot of athleticism and coming to this game they might have been favored, say that they're a bigger school and playing a more difficult league, and especially since they beat the one seed before coming here tonight. But it looks like they're a the type of team that cracks under the pressure. The Sharks came out faster than they expected them to. I think they kind of underestimated the Sharks. And it's been really frustrating if you're Southeastern. You can see the, uh, the furious coaching staff and, of course, the players as well on the sidelines just not happy at all with the start. There's no doubt that there's a home field advantage. The Mon Moy team is feeding off the energy of the crowd. There's a huge fan section, loud, noisy, energetic. It's got to be helpful for Mon Moy and pretty intimidating for Southeastern. Yeah, exactly what you are right now if you're the Sharks. Southeastern coming out with an all-man press. They don't even have anyone back beyond half court right now. Charlot looks lost, but eventually he finds Stafford. Reed, back to Charlot, back to Reed. Stafford almost stolen away. Reed in the middle, tries to find Wazowski. They turn it over again. Here comes Middleton the other way. Madeira for three. Off, air ball again, but they're on the offensive glass. This team has been taking Middleton. a lot of threes that they have just completely air balled. They need to try to work inward, get some closer shots, layups in the key. Now they've not been efficient off from behind the arc. Here comes Mazzoulis the other way. Finishes all over Henderson. Middleton. Madero looks for contact, gets none. They miss on the offensive glass. It's Madero again. He misses again. Ball makes its way out to Henderson. Madero in the corner for three. Off. Three missed shots by Madero. On the offensive glass this time, it's Dubai Police. Sharks come out quickly the other end. Here comes Stafford. A rare miss for him on a left-handed layup. Here comes Carvalho, Henderson. Middleton wide open for three. It's in. About time of three falls if you're Southeastern. They haven't scored in what feels like a very long time. Now only down by 10, a minute left. Charlotte blows past the defender. Kicks it out to Reed in the corner for three, off. Stafford on the offensive glass. Reed in the middle, works his way. And dribbles it off himself, out of bounds. Southeastern ball, another turnover. Southeastern is going to have to make every opportunity they get if they want to finish this half, getting closer and cutting down on that 10 point lead. Underneath the basket, wide open. And he almost throws the layup, but Caruso comes through. Caruso almost blew that wide open layup for a second. Mazuris crossing over in the lane. Gets no call. Fights for the offensive rebound and does this time. The foul called that time on Joel Carvalho. Nice job by the Sharks that time getting back into the paint, heading to the free throw line again. Only three fouls called on Southeastern tonight. Mazuris. 
makes the first. Pushes the Sarks lead back up to nine as Blakely will check back into the game for Charlotte. Lewis makes the second as well. Sharks lead now at 10. Getting those foul shots have been essential. If they could have made all of their foul shots, if Southeastern could have made all of their foul shots, this would have been a much closer game. Yeah, no doubt. That's what's hurt them the most, I think. Because uh, it's not like they haven't had opportunities. They've gone to the line a lot. Six fouls called on the Sharks, only four on Southeastern but really have been poor from the free throw line, specifically Longway has gotten there, I believe, three times, maybe missed all six free throws. Um, so that's, that's something you can't be happy about if you're Southeastern. It's a big difference between 28-24 and 28-18. Yeah, exactly. Middleton crossing over the top. Paris converts again. Paris has been a bright spot in the Southeastern offense so far tonight, coming off the bench for running a lot of points. Zulus blows by on the side up. He has Middleton in the middle. Finishes around the defender. Only two seconds left. Middleton will have a chance out of prayer. He doesn't get it off in time. And it misses. Sharks lead now back up to 10 with 30 to 20 as we enter halftime. First half has gone beautifully for the Marmar Sharks. They came out, caught Southeastern by surprise, got a lead early, and have kept it ever since. A uh, huge production by Eli Nickerson. He's already dropped over 10 points, I believe, tonight, already in double figures. So he's on track for a very nice game. And we'll be back for the second half of action of this Monomoy Sharks Southeastern South Sectional quarterfinal.
Welcome back to the second half of action of the South Sectional quarterfinal between the Monomoy Sharks and the away team, Southeastern. Southeastern, of course, as we said earlier, might have been favorite coming to this game, considering the fact that they beat the number one seed, Blue Hills. But the Sharks have come out early here and surprised them with a 10-point lead to end the first half. And in right now for Southeastern, it's a player that hasn't gotten a lot of minutes, Joel Cavallon. And they call the offensive foul. It'll be Sharks ball. And the foul was on Carvalho. Nickerson will inbound it from the side. Looks like Southeaster will be pressing, trying to get the ball and turn some quick turnovers into some points to cut down on that 10 point deficit. That continues not to work though. Missoula's to Stafford, get away, he scores. Middleton in the offensive glass, throws it out of bounds off of Nick Mean. Southeastern will have the ball underneath the hoop. Southeastern, along with Carvalho, as I mentioned earlier, has Henderson out there, uh, Middleton, Madero, as well as, it looks like they're gonna have, oh yes, they came out with Paris as well. Played very well in the first half. He gets the ball below the hoop, misses. Reed comes over with the rebound. No, correction, Middleton gets it. Contorts his body in midair, misses. Stafford on the glass. Here comes Nickerson. Driving. Almost finishing, Reed on the offensive boards, converts the second chance points. Just like in the first half, offensive rebounds seem to be playing a big role. If Monterey can keep getting offensive rebounds, they're looking at a good point. And the foul called that time on Nickerson, I believe. Or no, no, it was called on it was called on Nick Meehan that time. Didn't see a whole lot of contact, but either way, Southeastern will have a fresh shot clock. Madero driving. Closely defending, throws up an awkward layup and it falls. And stolen away by Middleton right away. He tries to get it through, stolen away by Mazoulis. Mazoulis draws the foul on Middleton. Too much body contact that time. Nickerson will have the inbound. Nickerson finds Missoulis to Stafford. Defended by Middleton. Looks like Southeastern's doing a little bit of man-to-man -man now. Here comes Missoulis through the middle. Fakes the pass, throws up the layup, and gets the offensive foul called. Nice job that time by Dante Madero, drawing the offensive foul. He got his feet set in time. Here comes Middleton. Gets his screen from Paris. Madero, off the Paris screen. Gets stolen away by Nickerson, but they call the foul again. Could have been a little bit of a flop that time from Dante Madero, if you ask me. I didn't see a whole lot of contact. Looks like he just lost control of the ball, but fell to the ground, and the ref decided to see a foul. So now Southeastern will have, again, a fresh shot clock. Third foul called on the Sharks already tonight. This half. Yes, this half. As Wisniewski comes in for Nickerson. Madero wide open, off. Mazuris. Stolen away by Middleton. Middleton keeps getting in the passing lanes. Fakes the pass. Finds wide open underneath the hoop. And Joel Carvalho will head to the line for two. Carvalho heading to the line for the first time tonight. This is the first. Elbow 
calls the second as well. Missing both free throws and airballing the second. Another lost opportunity for Southeastern when they really need to make all of these points they possibly can. And Southeastern looked to sub in John Ward. They did not have the chance right now though. Clock did not stop. The refs seem to be discussing the free throw line violation, which is what giving, which is what is going to give Carvalho a third free throw attempt here. Second one's not going to count. That call is reversed, and Monomoy is given the ball back. Here comes Mazoulis. Stafford. Wisniewski down low. Back to Mazoulis, stolen away by Madero on the fast break. Here he comes. He finishes on the layup easily. Madero is having a very strong second half and been forcing many turnover, turnovers to give them some extra points. Yes, and Southeasterners climbing back as they get another steal. Madero gets the steal and the foul. It's called on Chris Mazoulis. Henderson will take the inbound and a timeout is called by the Monomoy Sharks. Not a good start to the second half for the Sharks, even though the, the lead remains at 10. The momentum just seems to be shifting a little bit. Uh, a lot of fast break steals and a lot of fast break points for Southeastern. Sharks have been doing a lot of the same offensively. They're still very effective in, in that aspect of the game, but they've been very sloppy with the ball as they were in the first half, and they've gotten a lot of fouls, of course, just as they were in the first half. Already have five here in the third quarter with the five left. In the first half, the Sharks did a great job when they had possession at keeping possession. They passed around in the offensive half. They passed around, made holes. They didn't make the sloppy mistakes or let anyone get in the passing lanes like they have been doing this second half. Yeah. 5.53 left in the third quarter. Southeastern will be coming out with Middleton, Madero, Perez, uh, Henderson, and they were. it looks like they're also going to have out on the floor uh, John Ward, his first minutes of the night. And then the Sharks, of course, coming out with Meehan, Wisniewski, Stafford, Charlotte, and Reed. Here comes Ward for three off. Nice rebound by Reed. Stafford. Wisniewski wide open underneath the hoop. Fakes, but he, he travels when he went up with the pump fake. I didn't see any steps from here, but maybe I didn't have the right camera angle. And it'll be another turnover, so Southeastern will have a chance to bring the deficit to within 10 for the first time in a while. Middleton crossing over, gets it down low to Precise. And Perez, and Perez makes it. Here comes Meehan. Being closely defended. Almost stolen away again by Middleton. Charlot with the inbound. Looks like there's a lot of commotion going out on the floor right now. Me and pleading to the ref. A lot of contact going on between both teams off the ball. Meehan trying to get open. They get it down low to Reed. He's wide open underneath the hoop and makes the easy, easy layup. Pushing the lead back up to 10. In the corner, it's Ward off. 
Rebound almost collected by Henderson, but it goes off of Nick Mean, I believe they're calling it. So it's going to be Southeastern ball. Sharks still maintaining that 10 point lead. Perez in the corner. It's Henderson way short. Three point shots are not going well for Southeastern. They have attempted numerous times and only made one or two. Mean crossing, driving. Reed underneath the basket. Misses, clutches his own rebound, misses again. But Stafford is there, stolen away by Maduro. Here comes Southeastern the other way. Middleton to Perez. Misses, nice defense by Charlotte. The Sharks responding quickly. Stafford finishes and the foul. Huge basket for Isaiah Stafford, responding to the fast pace set by Southeastern. The Sharks will look to push the lead to 13. Very high intensity basketball, fast breaks, turnovers, everything's going really quick. Marmoy's got a lot of subs, they can take advantage of putting some fresh legs when they need to. And the timeout is called by Southeastern looking to give their players a break in the action. As just like the first half, everything seems to be going the Sharks' way. And they'll have a chance to push the lead to 13 with four and a half left in the third quarter. You can't be happy if you're Southeastern right now. Perhaps the only positive so far the second half for Southeastern has been all the steals they've accumulated. Most of those coming from their backcourt of Dante Maduro and Richie Middleton. They have both collected a lot of turnovers um, from the Monomoy Sharks, of course. They're doing a better job at reading the passes and getting in those lanes to intercept them. Yeah, but they haven't led to a lot of points as the Sharks still remain. Lots of missed opportunities. Yeah, the Sharks still remain dominant on the scoreboard. Stafford will look to continue what has already been an impressive performance. He misses the layup, but hustles for his own rebound and throws it out of bounds off of the Southeastern defender. Absolute pure heart and hustle that time from Isaiah Stafford, and he proves why he's the future of this team. Stafford does not like to give up. The Sharks fight for the rebound, but they get a foul. I believe they're gonna call it on Sam Reed for the loose ball foul. You gotta look back at the hustle by Stafford though. Misses the layup, follows his shot, and just outworks the other defender. Middleton. Raymond back to Middleton for three. Off. Rebound. Mean. Going the other way now. In the corner. Mazoulis drives, contorts, misses. Rebound out of bounds. So it's going to be Southeastern ball. And being subbed back into the game for the first time in a while for Southeastern is their starter, Daniel Longway. And he comes in for John Ward, who's given Southeastern a lot of minutes off the bench to start this second half. Middleton picks up his dribble, finds Longway. Middleton again, hesitating, trying to get around Missoulis. Longway in the middle, misses. Huge rebound by Reed, and they call the jump ball, so it's gonna stay Southeastern ball. Henderson tries to get it into Longway and then gets it back but was out of bounds. So Sharks will have the inbound. And in comes Jake Wisniewski for Sam Reed, who's given the Sharks a lot of really good minutes. Southeastern remaining with their press as Keith Bopst comes into the game. 
for Wesley Henderson. Man. Lows by Middleton in the lane, draws the foul. He'll have two at the line. the first. Sharks lead back up to 13. And he makes the second as well. Sharks now break the 40 water mark. Zero. And they call the foul on the floor. Looks like it's going to be on Wisniewski. That's his seventh foul, so they might be in the bonus. Yep, they are. So it looks like Madero is going to have a one and one for the first time this game. The Sharks are officially in the bonus. Fouls are playing a big role in this game. They've given Monomoy a lot of points by them having foul shots, but they've also given the ball over multiple, multiple times with small fouls. And he misses a first, so he won't have a chance at a second. Blakely with the rebound. Here comes Stafford, driving by Bobs, throws up the floater, gets the bucket, and the foul again. Isaiah Stafford just proving once again how key he is to this offense, scoring another and one. It just looks too easy for Isaiah Stafford right now. Just making the Southeastern defense look pathetic. And he misses the free throw again. But again, there's hustle by the Sharks, and they're going to call it Southeastern ball out of bounds off of Stafford. We would have liked him to uh, complete these last and one conversions, but we'll take, we'll take the uh, four points, which the Sharks are now up by 16. In the corner, Madero in. He has not made a three in a while, but he gets one to drop now. Lead down to 13. Definitely a shot they needed to make right there. Blakely in the post. Ian. Lewis, Blakely in the middle, almost gets it stolen away, gets it back. Mazoulis in the corner, finds me, and Stafford is wide open if they can find him. Here's Mazoulis again, it's stolen away, here comes Middleton, he's got numbers. Keeps it himself and finishes. Very nice defense and then quick break for Southeaster. Yeah, they're now up to 31 points. Mazoulis. call the foul underneath the basket. It looks like it's going to be on Jake. Or no, it's on Nick Meehan, so that will result in him being subbed out of the game. Because of foul troubles, the Sharks look to shove in, sub in Kyle Sarlo and Sam Reed as soon as they get the chance to. And Southeastern will head back to the line for another one and one opportunity. Uh, so far tonight, Longway has struggled from the line. Not really converted on any of his chances. We'll see if that trend continues. As the Sharks sub out Jake Wisniewski and Christian Blakely for Charlotte and Reed, keeping Nick Main on the floor despite the foul trouble. And he misses again. 0 for 5 for the line now as long way. Here comes Ian. Defense, 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 Reed in the corner. Gets it out to Ian for three. Bang! Big three for McMahon. 
Every time Southeastern starts to climb back, the Sharks just put another nail in the coffin with a three just like that. Raven just in the corner. Just up the clock, going back and forth, keeping it around 10 points. Definitely favors the Sharks at yeah, this so point. Yes, only one in, a, one in 10 seconds left, I believe. And they wave off the bucket. Looks like they'd have called a foul on the floor, so the Sharks will have an inbound. Yeah, they called a foul on Madeiro that time. Charlotte with the inbound. A minute, 10 seconds left. Meehan, Reed for three. Off. Rebound eventually collected by Bops. Madeiro for three. Off again continues to miss from behind the arc. He enforces the pass to Stafford. It goes way out of bounds. Southeastern ball. I feel the Shark Tank, you just gotta slow down right now. Uh, enjoy the fact that, that the clock is on your side. Keep a slow tempo, because you know Southeastern is trying to climb back in this game. And Bobs shoots the three way off. Rebound collected by Longway. He battles, misses again. Staff eventually comes away with it. Longway is a great opportunity to control this clock until the end of the third quarter, pass around, maybe make a final shot and put them up two more points. Missoula's thought about it. Me and down low. Circles back out. Charlotte down low to Missoula's. Great pass by Kyle Charlotte. Found the wide open. Chris Missoula's. He gets the easy two. Milton thought about it. Four of a shot, but he had to throw it up because the clock has almost expired. And as we end the third quarter, the Sharks lead by 16, 47 to 31. They do have eight fouls to Southeastern six, but it, it hasn't helped Southeastern at all on the scoreboard as the Sharks dominate on both ends of the floor in the second half so far. Eight fouls in the first, in just one quarter, could really be a problem for the Sharks going into the final and fourth quarter but they are dominating the scoreboard. 16 point lead with eight minutes. Sharks are, they gotta be pretty happy at this point if they know that they can keep doing what they're doing. They've got a pretty solid chance of taking this win home. Yes, they, they are looking at what could potentially be a South section semifinal game following this one. It's not yet determined who they would play if they would walk away with a victory tonight, but regardless, it would be a huge, huge win for the Monomoy Sharks. And Southeastern will come out with Longway, Pops, Raymond, Madeiro, and Middleton. And the Sharks will come out with Kyle Charlot, Nick Meehan, Isaiah Stafford, Sam Reed, and Chris Mazoulis. Mian. Mazoulis. Back to Mian. Stafford in the middle. Mian looks to regroup. Sharks having good ball movement right now. Mazoulis cuts down the lane, misses, and it's batted around before eventually Middleton comes away with it. He tries to get it to Longway, but it's ripped away by Sam Reed. Nice job by the Sharks getting back on the defense for that fast turnover. Stafford, back to me and Mazoulis in the corner. Stafford, the Sharks moving it around. Charlot on the low block, gets it down low to Reed. Another great pass by Kyle Charlot, and the Sharks bench is fired up. Just over seven minutes left in this game. Bopst, slices the defense, finds Longway. Easy floater, using his height that time. Bopst has been one of the few players on the Southeaster team that has really been playing a good game. Yeah, he brings a lot of energy. Stafford. Mazoulis. Here comes Meehan. Stafford in the middle to Charlotte. Pulls up from baseline, sinks it. Kyle Charlotte has had ice in his veins so far today. 
He's been efficient, whether it's been passing or scoring for the Sharks' offense. Or blocking and rebounding. Yeah, that too. All around, great game. Both sides of the floor. Here comes Madero. Middleton will take it. Banks it way off. Long way, looking for help in the corner. 18-point deficit. They gotta find a way to start scoring quick if they want to stay in this and have any kind of chance. Madero drives, draws a foul, and I'll head to the line for two. It's gonna be the Sharks' ninth foul of the game. One more, and I believe they're gonna be in a double bonus. Makes the first. It's a good free throw right there for Madero. He's been inefficient so far tonight. But if you're Southeastern, you're hoping you can help them climb back in this game with only six minutes left in the fourth. Converts the second as well. Nickerson, who's recently subbed back into the game, gives it into Meehan. Nickerson on the wing. Down low to Stafford. Moves around the defender, doesn't get the call. It's on the floor. Meehan comes away with it. Gets it and the foul. Nick Meehan finishing the layup with the contact. They'll head to the line for a chance to convert an and one. It's the third and one of the half for Monomoy. And Southeastern's seventh foul of the night. Correct, an eighth. And Meehan finishes on the end one opportunity. Madero back to Middleton. Bops. Pulls the three in the defender's mouth. Short. Rebound. Charlotte looks for help. Finds Meehan. He's being closely defended. Nickerson in the corner. Reed wide open underneath the basket. Tries to finish around the defender, can't. Charlot gets blocked by Longway. Out of bounds, Sharks ball. <laughs> Substitution made for the Sharks as Wisniewski just came back into the game. Meehan for three, it's in. Meehan showing a little ice in his veins as well. Just over five minutes left. The Sharks have taken over. There are so many Shark players who have just been having outstanding games. Meehan, Nickerson, Stafford, Charlo. They're all just playing great games. The chemistry's coming together. They're excited to be here. Adrenaline's pumping, and they're putting the basket in the net. Er, putting the ball in the basket. Ball in the basket. Yeah, there we go. Off the missed three. Meehan collects the offensive rebound. This is all in response to Medeiros' big three just a moment ago. Kyle on the low block, short, gets the rebound. Tries to force the pass into the lane. And it's deflected out of bounds. Sharks will have the inbound way back on their own end. 24 seconds on the shot clock. Southeast only has a one man press now. It'd be wise to use most of the shot clock if you're the Sharks. Just under four and a half left. They have a 19 point lead. Meehan for three, off. Long way comes away with the rebound. Here comes Bobst. Middleton, Bobst again, crossing over. Madero. And the ball gets stuck on the rim. So I believe that means that the possession will stay with Southeastern. Raymond over the top to Middleton. Got to start taking shots fast and furious right now if you're Southeastern. Madero back out to Bops. Thought about it. Pulls it off. 
Rebound batted around. Here comes Longway. He throws it in. Saved. They didn't need to, though. The rebound, the ball was deflected out of bounds by a Sharks defender. And Madero tried to keep it in bounds, but threw it out as a result. Sharks have the inbound. And in comes Isaiah Stafford for Nick Meehan. Nickerson. Mazoulis. Stafford. Nickerson underneath the basket. Gets contact. And he'll head to the line for two. Nickerson converts on the first. Sharks lead back now to 20. 20 with only three minutes and 26 seconds. You gotta be pretty positive right now with your, if you're the Sharks, but you can't let your guard down. Anything can happen. Eli makes the second lead now at 21. Here comes Maduro. Middleton. Back to Maduro. Maduro will pull the deep three. Air balls it. Sharks will have a chance to end this game now as they sub back in the majority of the starters. And Nick Amin just subbed back into the game as well as Sam Reed. Here comes Amin. Zulis back to me. In the corner, here comes Mazoulis. Draws the foul. That is the ninth foul. Both teams are up to nine for this half. Mazoulis will have an opportunity at the line. Both teams with nine fouls now. And makes the first. Sharks lead now at 22. Misses the second. Rebound Sam Reed. Finishes on the second chance. Continue to out hustle Southeastern. The offensive rebounds have really helped the Sharks. Even though they have a height disadvantage, they've been getting out there and taking the ball most of the time. Yeah, it's, it's helped them out a lot. It's the reason why they have such a big lead right now. 24 to be exact. With 2.30 left, here comes Stafford. Tips it out of bounds. Southeastern ball. I gotta say, nobody could have expected a performance like this. Even if you did think the Sharks were gonna win this game, you would not have expected it to be in such a blowout fashion with a 24 point lead. Bops, turns it over, stolen away by Meehan. And Southeastern just looks defeated right now on both ends, energy is down. I think they know uh, the results of this game already. And it's been a good season for them. They made a, a good playoff run. They defeated the number one seed. Um, but in the end, it just wasn't enough. And they came in here tonight maybe thinking they could walk all over the Monomoy Sharks and play in a smaller league. But that just wasn't the case. And the Sharks look like they're gonna come away with a huge South sectional quarterfinal victory. Their first in over four years, which is unprecedented. Sharks were definitely the underdog, underdog here, which played to their advantage. They didn't let their guard down. They came out strong, and they never gave up.
The Sharks look to finish this game with Nickerson, Reed, Meehan, Mazoulis, and of course Stafford. Southeast has pulled out most of their starters and yeah, they got a lot of their bench in right players. now, including Luca, Lucas Campos getting his first minutes of the game, Henderson back in there, as well as Joel Carvalho. And also getting his first minutes are Jordan Sanford. Here comes Reed in the middle. Mazoulis fighting for position, misses the layup. Carvalho looking for someone to pass to. Here comes Ward back into the game as well. And Jordan Sanford. They look trapped, they get Henderson for three. Air mails it again. Here comes Mazoulis, Reed. Tries to force it down low to Stafford, knocked out of bounds. Sharks still with 22 on the shot clock and 128 on the game clock as they look to make some late game substitutions, get some of the bench players some solid minutes. And the crowd's starting to warm up the bus chant. Even they know this one's all but over. Meehan just puts another nail in the coffin. Adds on some more points to his stat sheet. Ward lead. There's nothing that Southeast or any team can do about that in a minute, 13 seconds. Here comes Mean. A minute left now. Mean drives into the lane, blows the easy layup. Doesn't matter at this point. As they make a timeout, maybe to get in some substitutions. And for Southeastern, probably just telling his players, I know it's a good effort this season. Try but, uh, to finish it out strong. Yeah, just maybe. Just finish, finish it out strong. Don't embarrass yourself here. Show good sportsmanship. And, and uh, put forth a good effort. They've done that all night. It just wasn't their night from, from the shooting field. They missed a lot of shots tonight. Their field goal percentage is very low, uh, despite the fact that they probably won the turnover battle and the foul battle. Uh, it just wasn't enough in the end. They just couldn't convert from anywhere tonight. Shots just were not falling. The three-pointers really just gave up possession for air balls and didn't help. Sharks are going to come out with Jason Masiello getting his first minutes, Ryan Lacerra getting his first minutes, as well as Tommy Graham. And uh, of course, Eli Nickerson and Isaiah Stafford still in there for the Sharks. Sharks. The Sharks are known to only rotate seven players during the normal game, which keeps them fresh legs as they rotate often, but it's nice to see some new players on the court. And they call the jump ball on the floor, so it's going to be Sharks ball. 45.3 seconds left now. And Christian Blakely will also get back in there for Eli. Blakely finds Masiello. Crossing over. Closely defended. Gets Tommy Graham open. Oh, tries to go over the top to Lacerra, but turns it over. Here comes Henderson. Masiello with him. He moves around Masiello but misses the layup. Stafford trapped in the corner. Masiello turns it over. Stolen and scored by Henderson. Here comes Graham. Masiello with it. Blakely. Graham. And this game is over. Amount of my Sharks with the victory, 64 to Southeastern's 40. It was a great night for the Amount Sharks. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Amount WMRS production. And uh, we'll be back, hopefully, later in this tournament run. Thank you.